There are two vignettes that are associated with the site planning exam. One is on grading and one is an actual site design. When I've talked to folks at NCARB, first of all, big picture, when ARE 5.0 comes in a year and a half or so, they're actually getting rid of all the vignettes. And in many ways, that's a great thing because the vignettes are frankly a little crazy. But as I often say, the devil you know, who knows what 5.0 will be like. I wouldn't wait until the vignettes are gone. I would say dive in now and take it now because... While they're crazy, they're sort of a crazy you can figure out. Not only that, but at various points along the way, I've heard people talk about how the grading vignette and possibly the site zoning vignette might have been removed anyway. But as far as I know, they're both still in there. And so they're just kind of smaller ones. The site planning vignette is actually a trickier one that trips people up quite a bit. People tell me that the reason that you might fail on the site grading vignette is just because you were moving fast and not paying attention because you're thinking about the other one. This is one you should not fail. Yet people fail it all the time because it's just sort of goofy. And if you don't spend a lot of time doing topography, it's just sort of an unusual thing to think about. Some quick discussions about kind of what we're talking about here. We talk about the grading vignette, the issues that we're really referring to. By far, the biggest issue here is water drainage. So the whole thing is really about how does water, when it rains down onto the site, where does it go? And does it go into something that we don't want it at? That's essentially the entire point of this vignette. So you're trying to control water as it moves across the site, and then you're going to gather it in some way and move it around the things that you don't want the water to go into, which is generally any structure, often it's pathways or driveways, things like that. There's a few other issues that it could be about. It could have an issue of accessibility or even just sort of a slope on a driveway, something like that, that you would have to check to make sure that a path was actually an accessible path and we'll talk about that in a second. Another kind of odd but quite real issue here is don't mess anything up. So that sounds a little funny, but what I'm saying there is if you look on this example over here, there's a bunch of trees, there's like rock formations, there's in this particular version, there's a sculpture thing or something. I forget what it is. It's like a place for a gazebo or a sculpture or a garage or a overlook or something. There'll be something that's part of the site. And you can't change anything at that point. So, for example, in the trees, you can't change the topography in the tree because you'll be changing the roots. And if you change the roots, you're going to kill the trees. So when I say don't mess anything up, what that's really referring to is make the dramatic changes you need to on the site in order to move the water around, but make sure those are contained and tight so that they don't bother anything else. They don't hit the rocks. They don't hit the trees. They don't hit the sculpture. They don't whatever it happens to be. That's kind of a key thing but it's really all about the water. And to talk about this, one of the things we have to talk about is the idea of slope and the sort of rather odd situation that slope is actually referred to in percent. I think the idea of using the percent term for slope, I think it's very confusing for people. It throws people off all the time. And there's a very simple reason for this. When you use percent for a slope, let's say you're talking about a 20% slope. What that's referring to is every 100 feet horizontal, is going to be 20 feet vertical. If you start kind of doing the math, that would mean that for every one foot vertical is five feet horizontal, right? So it's the same ratio. It's a way of thinking of it as a ratio, so the percent. The reason I don't like using percent as a way of talking about slope is that if we start thinking of 100% slope, think in your head, what is 100% slope like? 100% slope sure sounds to me like it's a vertical line. That makes logical sense, yeah? But it's not, right? 100% slope is... 100 feet horizontal compared to 100 feet vertical. So that's actually a 45 degree line. That's not a vertical line at all. So you think about that, let's say that's 100 feet horizontal, that's 100 feet vertical, that, drawn badly, is a 100% slope. So you can very easily have a situation where you have 120% slopes or 140% slopes. They'd be very, very steep. It's not likely it's gonna show up on the exam, but out in the world, you can actually have that fairly simply, which just sort of is a non-compute in my mind. Like 100%, that should be the top. So that's one of the things to watch out for. You should have a couple of numbers sort of reasonably understood. Those would be 2% slopes, 5% slopes, 20% slopes, 8% slopes. The 8% because that's an accessible slope. So anything steeper than 8.3% is not accessible. Anything less than that is accessible. If you do the calculation, you realize that a 1 to 12 is going to equal about 8% slope. And that's the accessible ramp. So the reason those other numbers come is because those are numbers that are likely to show up on the vignette. 2% slope is the general minimum that you're allowed to have anything slope. 
blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or if you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. And that's going to be on April 22nd.